Hello again, my fellow pals. It's your boy, Daniel Bendian, here with another episode of the Pals TV, the Experience Podcast Series. The series where we discuss topics on positivity, appreciation, love, and support. You know, before we actually get started, I actually have a surprise for all of you right now. So, yeah, I know it's a big shocker, but like, yeah, I no longer have blue hair anymore. I no longer have colored hair. My hair is like, you know, it's back to its natural color. The reason for why I decided to go back to my natural color was because, you know, I noticed that from bleaching and the coloring, my hair is getting a bit damaged. So like, you know, right now I feel like I just need to reset my hair. So in the meantime, you know, who knows, maybe in the future I'll re-dye it again. But for now, you know, I'm actually loving how this, the natural color right now. So I'll probably stick with this for now. But for today's episode, I'm actually going to be, you know, wearing a hat because, you know, well... I didn't get a chance to actually style my hair today. So, and you know, yeah, I know, like, even if I wear a beanie, you know, actually, no, I know there are times when it's like, when I actually do style my hair, it's like my hair, like, you know, I actually usually style it, but like, you know, since today I didn't style it and like, you know, I, it's too late now. I already flattened my hair. <laughs> since it's too late now, I mean, might as well just stick with it. Anyways, 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 please don't forget to leave a like below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel, Pals TV. With that being said, don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts and to sign up for our newsletter, Pals News, which I will leave in the description below. So, you know, today we're actually going to be featuring Maverick Ahanmisi, and he is a um, professional basketball player who currently plays for the Alaska Aces of the Philippine Basketball Association. So mm -hmm. right now, he currently resides in Los Angeles. And uh, as of right now, another thing that I wanted to mention is that the Alaska Aces is actually one of the most popular basketball teams right now in the Philippines. So being able to have this opportunity to meet with Maverick is very exciting for me. So with that being said, let us put our hands together for the Alaska Aces, Maverick Ahamisi. Hello, Maverick. It's really great to speak to Hi. you today. How are you doing today? I'm good. And just um, just finished doing reading and um, some stock trading. But that's about it. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. What are you reading overall? <laughs> um, I was actually reading a book. It's basically a book for stock trading um i'm actually taking classes right now so you know i'm trying to learn the market better in order for me to you know capitalize on it mm -hmm. definitely yeah. that's the thing i noticed that you know a lot of you know millennials and i guess zillennials <laughs> i'll call yeah. them zillennials because honestly like even if that's not like an official term i'm still gonna i identify as a zillennial even though I'm mm. technically Gen Z, I want to be a millennial so bad. So I'll call <laughs> oh, myself really? a millennial. <laughs> 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 but anyways, yeah, I see it all over like social media. So many millennials are doing, you know, stock trading and they're also reading books on finance, which yeah. is something I know for sure that I'm going to have to um, start doing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's but, definitely, especially right now, um, you know, from what I've noticed is that the stock market is a crazy time for people to start investing and, and getting into it because of the pandemic. I think one of the reasons so many people have gotten into it is because, you know, a lot of people have lost jobs and, and, and things. And this is just another way for people to make money on the side. So it, it's just a crazy market right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with that being said, you know, I encourage you all my fellow pals, you know, check up on, you know, on like, you know, investing and trading. And I encourage sure. you all, like, you know, my fellow pals as much as possible, like, you know, to read up on finances and it's best to do it as early as possible. So, you know, that's a very important start with that being said. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. The earlier, the better. Definitely. So with that being said, I just wanted to ask, but how has it been in Los Angeles? Do you have any upcoming plans with anything? Um, Actually, I mean, it's, I mean, it's been great. I always love coming home. I mean, the more, I mean, I, I love what I do. Um, and there, there's nothing that will ever change that. But I do more than that. I do love coming home and hanging out with family and, and you know, just relaxing. I, I know that when I'm out there in the Philippines, I, I work hard enough for myself to come home and, and just, you know, relax, period. 
And um, actually right now, after this um, interview, we're actually planning to go to the snow and go snowboarding. So that'll be fun. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is going to be yeah. like super fun. Oh my gosh. So snowboarding. Oh my gosh. I wish I knew how to do that. <laughs> oh no, I, to- I just learned. So don't, don't worry. <laughs> You're it's not the awesome. only one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's the pizza hot dog. Wait, no, that's skiing. <laughs> yeah. Oh I don't trust me. I don't know any of the phrases, the names, nothing. <laughs> where do you go? Um, where do you go snowboarding at? Um, I think from my house in Santa Cruz, it's only like an hour drive, mountain high. So I mean, it's pretty close. It's fairly close. So that's why we go a lot. Oh, nice, nice, mm-hmm. nice, nice. Oh my gosh, that looks really beautiful. I hope to like you know check that out one day. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure you should. Definitely, yay, perfect. So I guess starting off, you know, I just want to say like I'm very thankful once again, you know, for the opportunity to meet with you and to discuss your goals and dreams in life overall, you know, that being said, I was wondering if, you know, you could introduce yourself. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, my background, uh, let's just start from, uh, where I went to school. Um, obviously I was born here in Los Angeles. Um, I went to school in college for four years, got a, um, degree in human resources, um, at the university of Minnesota. Um, I had a full ride scholarship there. And then straight from there, I went to the Philippines where I have been playing professional basketball for about seven years now. Um, After basketball, I mean, you know, there's so many options for me to um, basically move into entrepreneurship or um, I also have an option to become a hospital administrator. Mm, But, you know, I'm still obviously playing. So that's something that's in the back of my mind, but I'm also doing trading. So that's, you know, I'm kind of conflicted in things that, you know, I I would want to do after I'm done playing basketball. But um, I think for me, if anybody were to ask me right at this moment, what I would want to do after basketball, it would probably be trading stocks. And, and I say that because um, the biggest reason for me is, that it gives me the freedom to trade and and work wherever I want to. Um, you can bring a laptop as long as you have Wi-Fi or you know some kind of connectivity. You can trade from anywhere in the world, and and I've always um, I'm kind of used to having no schedule now. You know because I'm a basketball player, um, I just go to practice. You know I I work out on my own time. Like I go to the weight room and stuff like that on my own time. You know, it's really um, a demanding job in terms of your own ability to um, want to do those things. So I feel like maybe a job where I have to be forced to go in like a nine to five might not be something for me anymore. (laughs) So, um, you know, I mean, that's just my opinion. But, you know, that's uh, from that point you know, I still love what I do. And and I'm probably going to continue to do what I do until I can't anymore. No, that's pretty good. That's pretty good overall. Because it's like, you know, when you're doing like the stocks, you're you're basically just working from home. So of course, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, of course, it's like you get to do all the work and you basically get to make money from just, you know, from home. And it's like in the comfort of your own home. Oh, for sure. But at the end of the day, like, I know that it's like very demanding in a way because you have to be your own boss. Yes, because um, there's going because there's going to be an instance where it's like, you know, there's no one who's going to tell you what to do specifically. So it's like you have to get on with it as much as possible. So and that's where the, you know, learning about the finances come in. So that way, you know what to do at the end of the day. So I guess what I wanted to ask was, how did you get into basketball and who are some of your favorite players? Oh, hmm. How did I get into basketball? Um, man, honestly, my, my first sport was tennis. That was my first sport. And then um, my grandpa put a basketball in my hand. And ever since that day, honestly, I just I just fell in love with the game, period. I mean, I never my my dream was always to, you know, play professionally, but I never saw it as a possibility until like maybe mid year in high school, you know, because my dad is always strictly about education you know he always used to tell me like you know don't worry about basketball too much you know it might not take you that far blah 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 you know stuff like that and and i agree i agree to an extent but 
you know, there was something that happened during sophomore year of high school where he actually saw something in me, I guess. And he saw how, how I loved it and how good I was or how good I could have potentially be. And he was actually the one starting to push me to, you know, pursue my, my dream of being a pro. So, you know, I, I've, I've always loved basketball period. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. That is awesome. Like, you know, that's a very big inspiration because it's like, you know, coming to the idea of, you know, support, like support as a family, like, you know, as a support system, oh, yeah. you know, it's like family is there to encourage you to, you know, follow your dreams and your aspirations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really like hearing that story because whenever, because when I hear that, you know, idea from you, it's like the whole, you know, it's the, um, it's follow your dreams like don't ever let mm -hmm. anyone tell you otherwise you know if there's no something doubt. that you love doing go for it if somebody tells you no that's not for you no that's not for you I was like don't listen to them follow your heart and yeah. I really you know really appreciate that from you yeah no doubt and and like like you said I think a lot of people just need to follow it's going to be a grind for sure um, especially you know it's the toughest thing is when your parents they, they always support you. They'll always support you. But, you know, when they kind of want you to do something else other than what you're dreaming of doing, that's when it gets really hard. But I feel like no matter what, even if you do something else that your parents don't want you to do, those are your parents, you know, and, and they're going to love you and support you no matter what you decide to do. So, I mean, that was that was always my thought process, really. Mm -hmm. If there's, you know, that actually kind of reminds me, you know, I, I actually hate to talk a little, I hate to talk about myself in this case, but, you know, mm. I'll just like, you know, keep it brief, but, right. you know, I actually am kind of in a similar boat because, you know, I was, you know, I graduated from SF State, you know, as a cinema major. So when I first told my, you know, parents that I wanted to be a film major, they seemed a little shocked at first because, you right. know, my, my parents, you know, they seem to, you know, have this emphasis on the healthcare field and it seems That's like there was is. that yeah and yeah. then it seems like there was that expectation that I would be working there in yeah. which when I first went to community college I took a bunch of science classes because I had that mindset that I was gonna I know I'm I'm gonna do biology as a career after I graduate but then that was just what I was thinking in my brain because it's like with family all around me since they're all in the healthcare industry that's yep. what we're thinking but deep down inside I knew that I wanted to do film yeah so of course I had to come to my senses and you know when I told them that they were shocked at first but then once I you know once I started signing up for the classes they started to understand okay maybe if this is what he really wants we'll, wants we'll just do. have to let them and that's yeah, exactly, at exactly. The end of the day. you know and and yeah I mean honestly our our family was in the same boat you know what I mean everybody always says like oh you should be a nurse or you know become a doctor or you know work in the medical field or whatever but honestly I've I've never seen myself like working in the hospital or you know I I love giving I love caring for people but maybe in a different way mm -hmm. you know what I mean and so like for that to still be an option always like it's still probably an option for you it's probably still an option for me but you know, I think it's more important to pursue your dreams first and then have something to fall back on just in case all else fails. You know what I mean? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's a very, that's a, that's a very important point because it's like, you know, I kind of noticed this is a, you know, a big thing that's actually happening right now. I'm sorry to backtrack a little. Oh no, you're but, good. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> but like, there are some, you know, I have, I know there, there are some people who I know who are like, you know, they're actually, you know, some of them graduated already, but then they're going back to school for nursing. Yeah. So even if like, you know, even if there's like that idea that, you know, we're going to do something else that's outside of, you know, our intended plan, you know, of course, like stuff always changes and, you know, we could always come back to it. For sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yay. Awesome. So I guess um, with that being said, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your overall journey with basketball. So I remember that you mentioned that you started playing for the University of Minnesota, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. And then I also read online that you also played for the Rain or Shine Elasto Painters. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. 
Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, um, straight out of high school, um, I actually, uh, if you want to backtrack, my journey really is like I actually signed to go play basketball at the University of oh, Boise State, actually, Boise State. And um, something happened to where um, my SAT scores didn't submit on time. So um, I chose to go back to prep school or basically another year of high school. You know, um, I was still pretty young at the time. So uh, it, it didn't really bother me to go back to school again, you know, to have more options, more potential scholarship options, you know. And uh, I went back another year and I got a scholarship to the University of Minnesota full ride. Um, went there for four years. Like I said, got my human resource development degree. Um, won, I think, one national championship with them. Um, we went to the NCAA tournament two years for two years. Um, and then after that, uh, yeah, then I went to the PBA straight. Uh, and then the first team I got drafted to is Rain and Shine. I was the third pick in the PBA draft. And uh, I played with them for four years. My first year, my rookie year, we won a championship already. Um, so that's, you know, that's obviously something I will never forget. Um, played with them for four years and then they traded me to the Alaska Aces. And here I am now trying to get another championship somehow. Oh gosh, that is awesome. That's awesome to hear. Um, yeah. Since you since you just mentioned that you're trying to get another championship at this time, you know, I was just wondering, yeah. like, you know, what are your plans for that? Actually, well, we're we're a fairly new team. I feel like because when I got traded to the Alaska Aces, um, they just had a coach change, a coaching change. So um, it's a work in progress. But I think we have a, a really good team. We've made it to the playoffs ever since I've been there. Um, and they've always been a great team. I think they're one of the most winningest franchises in the PBA. So um, they have good uh, pedigree in terms of winning. <clears throat> um, as far as trying to win a championship, you know, I have to do my part, obviously, and, and just trying to stay healthy and, uh, you know, my game all the time. And, uh, you know, a big part of that trying to win a championship is my teammates. Obviously, I can't, you know, I can't do it by myself. And, um, you know, the coaching staff and having that team chemistry and trying to build um, something that, you know, will make some noise in the league. And I think of the pieces to do so. Um, and like I said, it's a fairly new team, but we're building upon what we have right now. Awesome. That is really great to hear. That's really great to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, what I actually wanted to ask was, so, you know, how does training work for you? Like, you know, overall, what is your overall routine or what would you suggest, you know, makes like, you know, the ideal, you know, routine in your opinion? Oh, um, it depends. I, I think honestly, it depends on what you want to do or what your skill set is or, or what you, you know, for me as a basketball player, you know, obviously I, I, I do things that are going to help my career, you know, but just health in general. I mean, it depends on how strict you want to be on yourself. Like um, when I do start dieting and uh, I'm sure my sister, my, you know, my couple of my cousins can attest to how crazy, how crazy anal I get about my diet when I start actually getting in that mode. Um, I really don't veer off from eating any sweets or anything like that because I want my body to be in the best condition it could be in in order to perform at the best you know um in terms of working out you know I try to also stay in that mode that mode where you know I'm motivated every day to work on something or uh you know get better stronger legs maybe stronger arms another day or you know mentally even you know, by watching Kobe Bryant videos or, you know, whatnot. So there's different aspects of how you want to get better. But in terms of me getting better, that's what I definitely do is I diet, I work out and I, and I watch game film. So, you know, with that being said, I remember that you just mentioned, you know, Kobe Bryant, because it's like, you know, many of us looked up to him and, oh, you know, man, no it's doubt. really, 
it's really sad that like you know just knowing that it was almost about a year ago yep. that, a year that, ago was, yesterday i think actually my gosh that's like oh my gosh that is like very it's like really close just yeah a year if it's a year ago yesterday just knowing that like you know somebody that you know he had a family and it, he's someone that oh, many yeah. people looked up to so it's like you know just knowing that the you know that he's like you know passed away it's really it's really sad to hear but it's like you know whenever we catch up on his you know archives of his highlights and the best that he's done it just you know it the memory never fades away oh no doubt I mean he's one of my all-time favorite players I know people will argue and say he's probably not the best but in my eyes that's who I grew up watching mm -hmm. uh, period I mean, you could probably see in the background back here, there's a Kobe poster right there. So like, you know, that's somebody who I idolized. He's he's probably the reason why I play basketball, you know? So when that, that, that day came where he, you know, that tragic incident happened, that was, you know, it wasn't even just me, honestly. It was like the entire world felt the pain because he did so much more for people other than basketball. He just gave people a sense of, a sense of motivation, a sense of like, you know, hope or grit, like you can do whatever you want to do, you know, as long as you, you stick to, you know, your goals. And that's something I always admire about Kobe Bryant, not, not even basketball. Mm -hmm. He def he was a like, I know he was a very, he was a very huge inspiration to many. And mm -hmm. which like, you know, so many people looked up to him, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's important that like we never let his memory fade and we always like, you know, every, that we always like, you know, remember him for, you know, all the good that he's done. And that's yeah, never going to, you know, fade away. <laughs> no doubt. So what I actually, the next thing that I wanted to ask you was, um, so since you play for the Alaska Aces, you know, what I wanted to ask was, you know, what position do you play and what do you appreciate the most about your team? um i play a point guard um point guard shooting guard um so basically a combo guard is what they would call me um and the most thing that i like about my team now is probably just how structured we are in terms of getting things done uh, i know the last team i played for um i loved them to death real family culture at that team but the difference between that team and this team now is like this team has more structure in terms of what they want to do and you can see that that structure it really helps us like get to where we want to go you know what i mean so i think that and in terms of you know i just love my teammates you know i have a lot of teammates that are also american and we joke around a lot and you know those are my that's those are my family out there so you know, those are two things that I really love about my team. Awesome. That's really great to hear, you know, you know, show always showing like, you know, appreciation and then it's always like, you know, giving compliments and then like, show, of course, like the idea of I love, I appreciate my team. I love my team. That's always like, you know, a, an important mentality to have because oh, at yeah. the end of the day, by showing that kind of support, believe it or not, that it, type of inner support is what in a way kind of helps you guys win. Because oh yeah, no, that goes yeah. that that type of love and like passion for not only the game, just your teammates in general, that it goes a long way because you know that person is gonna have your back on the court and vice versa. You know what I mean? And that's like that I think that builds a trust factor. And I don't think many teams can win a championship or like go very far if they don't trust each other. Mm-hmm definitely it's <laughs> that's it's like you know it's really it's really important because it's like you know everyone has to do their part equally mm -hmm. equally equally so so that way like you know everything you know we could get the best of it all <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> perfect so the next question that i actually wanted to ask was um mm -hmm. so i know that like right now we are actually you know since we're in a lockdown as a result of covid how have you know all of you have been working around that actually um yeah i mean it's definitely affected i think it's affected the whole world honestly but you know for for us um we had a season last year and then like the first game of the season that's when the whole covid stuff started happening and like that's when they kind of shut it down 
and I came back here actually um, for like six, seven months. And, you know, we weren't playing. So that's, a, we had, a, that had a big effect on us, but because of technology, I mean, we're, you know, we're doing Zoom right now. We found uh, a way to still work out with one another and we found a way to still get better, you know, while we were apart from each other. We did a lot of Zoom workouts um, and that in turn, when we got back to playing again, we were still in shape and we were still, you know, kind of fresh, kind of fresh. Awesome. That is, whoa. Okay. That is like, you know, really great. That's, I feel like that is one of the most like, you know, important aspects that we actually brought up because it's like, you know, right now, since we're in this digital world, the fact that you brought up, like, you know, we're still like meeting each other, like whether it's through zoom or digitally, and then you're still like doing the training programs. I really like that you, uh, that, you know, idea, because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're still going to be a, re a great team and we're not going to let COVID like, you know, hurt us. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Sure. I think I think that's the the best thing about technology. Honestly, it's helped. Uh, it's also helped a lot of people because, like you know, uh, especially people now that are losing jobs and things like that. Imagine teachers, for example. You know, without technology, without Zoom and stuff like that, they probably wouldn't be able to teach. They wouldn't be able to. Yeah, but because of this technology, like they're still able to do their job, and you know, and people are still able to progress in learning and it's pretty amazing actually mm -hmm. yeah i know that like you know there's some people who are like oh technology is bad technology is bad whenever people say that they're only focusing on the bad aspects of technology but then they're ignoring the good factors like you know the ability to still progress at times like these so that's where technology comes in and like you know saves the day i guess with that being said um this is, I'm not sure if I actually asked this already or if we went over this, but like, you know, just in case, what I wanted to ask mainly was, what do you love the most about basketball? Um, honestly, I, I can't, that's so hard for me to answer. Um, and the only reason I say it, it's like, it's kind of like asking me what my favorite food is, but I love food, you know, just in general, like I love all kinds of cuisines and, and that's the same thing with basketball I feel like somebody asked me if you ask what do I love about basketball I don't really have a straight for for you I just love everything about it it's just maybe that my best answer I could give you is that I what I love about basketball is how it makes me feel when I'm playing you know what I mean it, it makes me feel like there's nothing like nothing else matters really. I'm just, it's just me in a basketball and I'm just playing, you know, playing a game. But the best part about it is I'm playing a game and doing something that I love for a living. That That's really the best part that hands down, I can't even change. That's really great. Oh my gosh. You know, if we think about it, I was like looking back on it, I'm not gonna lie, but I was like, yeah, that kind of is a very, you know, tricky question because of how, you know, ambiguous it is. Yeah. Because it's like, there could be multiple options and there could, and on top of that, there's like, you know, like for me, they were to ask me like, what do you love so much about filmmaking? I'm like, you're right. I can't really give a straightforward right. answer because there's yeah. so many. Yeah. <laughs> but of something, course, I mean, I feel like something you love to do, it's hard to, it's hard to pick one one thing because you just like doing it every single day and you don't think about it you don't think about oh i like doing this because you know it's just something that comes second nature almost you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's almost like breathe it's almost like breathing for you <laughs> <laughs> like, you just do it you just i you don't just know do i it. just like doing it you just do it and you need to <laughs> yeah it's a mood oh my gosh so um, I guess, you know, this is going to be like, you know, a very important question that I wanted to ask next, but you know, mm -hmm. what advice would you offer for those who want to, you know, become professional basketball players, or at least, you know, want to play? What advice would you offer? Um, well, in terms of professional basketball, um, definitely just, man, stay in the gym, just, you know, day in, day out. I mean, there was times in high school, I don't even remember like hanging out with my friends very much because I was in the gym every single day. And it, there, it got to a point where, like I told you, my dad was actually pushing me to go into the gym. And so like, he would restrict me from hanging out with friends or like, you know, sleepovers or like going to 
high school parties and high school dances and stuff like that because he saw something in me and, and he saw a potential that I had to reach, you know, in order to get, do that. So, I mean, if somebody were to ask me what they suggest, I just, you know, get a coach or find somebody who believes in you um, and sees potential in you and just work with that person every single day, every single day. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, what you brought up actually kind of, you know, in a way relates to what I was actually going to shift into next. So mm. I'm actually going to be shifting our conversation into, you know, the concept of PALS. So okay. basically with regards to PALS, PALS stands for positivity, appreciation, love, and support. And, okay. you know, as I mentioned earlier for today's episode, we'll be discussing, you know, support. In this process, I guess I actually just wanted to start off by asking, but, you know, what is your overall perspective on support? You know, how would you define it? How would I define support? I think, um, you know, that's a very vague question, but um, my definition of support is, um, you know, any way that you can feel like you have someone to lean on, you know, in, in, in moments where maybe you're struggling, you know, or maybe moments where you need a little push or a motivation, you know what I mean? I, I feel like that's support for me. A good example is, um, you know, me playing basketball, obviously. And I always felt like um, before I was a sophomore, I loved basketball and my, my parents always supported me playing basketball, but they didn't support me into trying to achieve like becoming a pro they you know they obviously thought obviously i was small too i was a scrawny kid like you know what i mean like who 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 knew i was gonna get bigger like how much bigger i was gonna get and stuff like you know what i mean so they all they obviously supported me but supported me to do something else you know and and the fact that i think that's what really propelled me to get better was because i had parents to lean on you know, I had, I had family to lean on. I had my sister, I had my cousins to lean on in terms of if I had a bad game or something, you know, somebody would always be there. Even, even just the fact that you have a bad game and somebody can um, criticize you, like tell you what you did wrong. For me, that's support, you know, because in order for somebody to watch you and, and actually criticize how you're doing your thing, that means they care enough to like watch what you're doing, you know, and like, they want you to be better because they're telling you, you know, how you, what you could do to be a better player, you know? So there's different uh, definitions of support, but for me, you know, I love tough love, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's just how I was raised. But for me, a little bit of tough love is, is support for me. That, you know, I, I actually like that you bring up the idea of tough love because it's like, you know, Whenever it comes to like, you know, critis, whenever people give like criticism, it's like, you know, others tend to take criticism the wrong way the wrong or they way, can yeah. be like, you know, offended by it. And it's like, you mm -hmm. know, it's human nature because it's like, you know, people tend to have different responses to like, you know, the way, you know, stuff are said. And it's like, you know, yeah. I guess just as part of human nature, people hate being told that they're wrong. But as much as, you know, I'm personally guilty of that myself, but it's like, you know, I know that at the end of the day, the, I have to, you know, start not seeing like, you know, criticism as like, you know, an Bad insult thing. or a threat. Yeah. It's not. If anything, criticisms are there to point out like, you know, what you can do to do better. The people who criticize you in a way tend to be your best supporters. Right. And it kind of turns out real because it's like, for example, if somebody is doing something and then it's it doesn't look good but then a person decides to you know falsely say yeah i like what you're doing what you're doing is good in a way that's kind of not real support exactly you're, they're, they're not you know, really they're not really helping you i feel if mm -hmm. they just you know if they just clap for you all the time but deep down they know like okay maybe he's not doing that well but let me let me clap for him and tell him he's doing well for me, I feel like that's almost a slap in the face. It's like, you know, I want to be good at this. You know, you know, I want to be good at this. So I actually want you to criticize me or like tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because if you're just telling me that I'm doing good every time, I'm, there's no way I'm going to get better. Mm. 
no, you know, and that no, and even the best products still have some of their you know Laws. faulty aspects. Yeah, for sure. And it's like you know, it's always going to be important to point that out because it's like you know, if there's if there's one product that's the best, that's the best, the best, best, best with no faulty stuff, everyone would be buying it. Oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And there yeah. would be, and if if it was the best, best, best with no no um fixing needed there would never be a iphone 2 there would never be an iphone 3 there would never be an iphone 4 you know what i mean there would never yeah. be any upgrades there wouldn't be you know so, and that's just how i see life period that's just how i see stuff mm -hmm. definitely i really that is, i really like that a lot you know because it's like you know i actually you know, I, I know that we're diving deep into like, you know, the idea of criticism, but honestly, I feel like that's something that's really important in a way, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, even if it seems, you know, a bit ironic, you know, it actually works. It, it it's really defined in a way and it definitely works out because it's like, you know, mistakes are an opportunity for growth. So, you know, it's really, no you know, the, it's the realest thing. It's the realest way that you can grow at the end of the day. And, you know, Unfortunately, I'm guilty of this too, that, you know, in like, you know, it, my inner reaction to like, you know, whenever I get criticism, I'm like, oh no, it, it hurts. Yeah, oh, no. I mean, it's going to hurt. Yeah. It's definitely going to hurt. But at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, along with that hurt, you're going to, there's something going to happen to you in your head. It's like, okay, maybe I need to fix this. You know what I mean? So that I won't do that again. Because if that person is criticizing you for that specific thing, there's probably other people that think the same way. Think the same thing, you know yes. I mean? So it's not just one person. And like I said, mm -hmm. if you want to be better at your craft and you want to be liked by so many people, you have to start off by um, fixing those small things that that one person, you know, if you get that one person to like you, maybe another person might like you. Mm -hmm. You get those two people to like you, maybe three people might like you, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's a snowball effect. That's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> the snowball effect. Yes, that's a perfect example. That's a perfect, perfect example. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. So um, with regards to like, you know, that topic in mind, you know, whenever people play basketball, you know, there's a concept of teams in which everyone has to work together in order to win. So with regards to team support, what do you believe is the value of, you know, support within a team? Um, I think the value of support within a team, like I said, is trust and, um, you know, and wanting your teammate to do better, you know, and like, for example, um, I'm having a bad game, you know, this is my opinion. Um, I trust my teammates enough that I would, if I'm having a bad game, I would want my coach to take me out and put somebody in and I would cheer for my teammate as if you know that's my my family my brother like I would want him to succeed because his success is my success we're on the same team you yes. know what I mean no matter if I got zero points and he has 50 points but we win the game like I'd rather win the game like that's just my opinion you know I know a lot I actually know a lot of people that are you know opposed to that they they rather see you know themselves get you know, more points or whatever, but like, I, I can understand that side too, just because, you know, we just talked about it. You want to be better. Oh, yeah. You want to, you want to be the best version you can be. But for me, like the best version of a player I can be is for me to um, be able to be confident enough in my abilities that I can give confidence to my teammates too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm, I'm honestly just still learning this, this method of, and I feel like that's a good quality of becoming a leader is, is, um, you know, being selfless in terms of, you know, when you're having a bad day, sometimes it's just, you know, everybody has a bad day, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, giving that confidence to your teammate for them to step up is, is some of the biggest qualities I've, you know, I've seen, and I've learned that from multiple of my teammates in, in college and, and in high school. Mm hmm. That's really that's really, you know, that's really good to do because it's like, you know, because like, you know, um, there's kind of this like, you know, example in a way where it's like, you know, 
if there's one person who's like, you know, struggling, okay, if there's one person who's struggling, and then, you know, I'm assuming that um, they would have to, you know, I guess once it's, I don't know what the term is, but it's like when they switch players who are going to be like, um, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going to like criticize, up. I actually don't really know the terminology or like how like gameplay works overall, but mm -hmm. it's something like, you know, you have like a people who are playing in the court and then like after a game then they switch players oh substitutions um i think no they switch players after a game like or, I, I don't know what the phrase is no okay so what's the scenario like this is during the game or is it after the game um oh wait no it's during the game but like during the game okay so these are called substitutions mm -hmm. so like like i said like if i'm having a bad game i'm on the court right now you know yeah. i'm on the court playing and, and i'm having a bad game i'm not making any shots or you know i'm just playing really bad my coach i would want my coach to substitute yes a player in for me mm -hmm. because you know maybe give him a try maybe he can you know, help the team more than I can right now at this moment, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like I said, his success, if he plays well and we end up winning, then I'll still look good, you know what I mean? Because our team yeah. won. Because yeah. the team won. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's really, that's what I was going for. Thank you so much for like, you know. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, because it's like, you know, when you, if with the one person struggling, it's like, you know, if you have like with the substitute, if you have that one person who's like giving that word of encouragement, that person can save the day. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think, like I said, that person, you should be happy for that person just as much as that person should be happy for you when you're playing really well, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's going to build that trust between the, all the team and, and it's just going to, the chemistry is going to be so good. Mm -hmm. I guess my final question that I wanted to ask you was, you know, mm -hmm. Do you have any final takeaways on support or, you know, or do you have any final takeaways with regards to basketball or support? You know, for anybody out there watching this and, and, and kind of feeling like, you know, you're not supported or you don't have support in your craft or, um, you know, you feel kind of alone, um, you're not, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes it's hard to think that you have support when everybody kind of seems against you or negative. But, you know, just kind of take those negative vibes, honestly, as support. That's what I've always done. And, and like I said, in order for somebody to be negative towards you, they have to kind of support you in a way. Because if they're not negative towards you at all, that means they, they wouldn't care. They, they just wouldn't care. They wouldn't give their opinion on, your, you know, how you're doing or anything. So there has to be some type of level of support even whether it be negative criticism or positive criticism. But, you know, I think that support is a very uh, important aspect of life, period, just to, you know, um, move forward in your craft. And I think anybody who's trying to get better in their craft definitely should look for or follow a mentor. I know I, I have, I told you my hero is Kobe Bryant. And, um, that's somebody who I was my mentor. I never met him. You know, I've always watched him play. But, you know, find somebody, whether that be on Instagram, whether that be on, you know, LinkedIn or something, you know, and watch from a distance and, and watch what they do. If that's what you want to do, you know, and they're succeeding in that field, watch what they do. And that can be your support. You know, that can be your own personal support. Um, and in terms of basketball, man, whoever wants to play basketball out there, just, you know, the only thing I can say is in the beginning, just enjoy playing. I mean, I mean, you do something that you love. If you love it, you won't ever get tired of it. And that's, and that's the biggest thing. Perfect. You know, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Like to hear all of this, you know, like, you know, I really, you know, like all of that advice that you have to offer, because, you know, you could, anybody who's watching this, you could actually, you know, Maverick, you would, act, you could actually, you know, you never know, you could inspire what, someone one day who will, you know, look up oh, to your you. advice that. and also look up to you. So, you know, I really like all of that advice that you're offering, because it's like, you know, 
you know, any of our pals who are watching this one could one day be like, oh my gosh. So I actually see Maverick, you know, he's an inspiration. And I, you know, I really like his words of advice. And as a result of this, like, you know, if I, you know, if I follow Maverick's advice and then if I succeed, I could also be like a, you know, inspiration to others. So it's like, you know, oh, yeah. it just continue, it just, you know, continues. Yep. It's definitely a domino effect for sure. <laughs> but it's a good domino effect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. So I just want to let you know, Maverick, thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing all of your advice. And, you know, I know that the message of, you know, there is no me in team can be repetitive, but mm -hmm. regardless, it's still a concept that matters no matter what, you know, yeah. support is always important no matter what, no matter the form, whether it's support as a team to get the work done, or whether it's support from a family or a friend, or whether it's, you know, support in the form of, you know, criticism, because yeah, that sure. type of support is what gets you better. Yeah. All that matters is that you have a, a, a support no matter what, even if it's just, you know, even if it's support from just one fan, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's just only one because one fan can make a difference no matter what. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Perfect. You know, so going back to this, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've never played any team sports at all. So I'm right. not even familiar <laughs> that much <laughs> with gameplay. Especially yeah. basketball. But like, I really do appreciate you, you know, helping me and then helping to break it down for me as well as, you know, all of our other pals would love to learn more. So, oh, you know, no it's like, you know, it is a little embarrassing on my end that, you know, fortunately, I don't know much about sports. It's like, oh, no, trust me. You don't have to be embarrassed. If you told me about video stuff right now, I would not know where to start. I'll tell you it's, that. No, that's definitely a mood. That's definitely a mood. So it's like, you know, of course, it's like, you know, but at the end of the day, I really like this because it because it like, you know, when we have this opportunity to grow or to learn, we all learn like, you know, to listen. We all learn like, you know, new things. And, you know, yeah, I learned sure. a little bit more about, you know, I guess for today, substitution. Well, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Perfect. So, you know, before we go, I actually wanted to ask, but do you have any social media platforms that any of our pals could keep up with you on? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, my Instagram is Mav. Ahan Misi. Um, also, my TikTok is the same. Um, and I have a Twitter that is also the same. They're all the same. Mav Ahan Misi. Follow me on those three. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maverick. I just wanted to let you know, you know, please let us know when your next game is because, you know, I would actually like to watch it myself. Oh, you know, for sure. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Yay. Um, it's actually live. Most of them are actually live on YouTube. So. Um, yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know. But, awesome. Uh, I appreciate you having me for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. With that being said, you know, in regards to like, you know, I know that it's being like streamed on YouTube, but you know, hopefully one day, like after this pandemic ends, hopefully I could, you know, come over there and watch it in person. Oh, I'll bring yeah, no doubt. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yes. 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 Yay. Perfect. Well, anyways, I wish you the best of luck on your future Thank game. You. And I know that for sure you are going to win no matter Thank what. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyways, 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 anyways. That's all the time we have for today, folks. I'm your fellow pal, Daniel Bendian, signing off for today. Take care, pals, and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you all shortly. Bye-bye.